Is Ukraine getting enough weapons to win? It is no secret that Ukraine's defense capability is currently largely dependent on the supply of weapons and equipment from Western partners. This is due to a number of factors, but nevertheless, from time to time the question arises, do the Ukrainian defense forces receive enough weapons to not only keep the defense, but also to successfully attack? This question is being asked more and more frequently, especially given the results of the summer offensive campaign, which ended with a serious depletion of Russian forces, but without large-scale liberation of territory. In his article for The Economist, the commander-in-chief of the AFU, Valery Zalyushny, clearly pointed out the main points that prevented the AFU from achieving its objectives, namely the lack of sufficient means for demining, questions of artillery and its provision, electronic warfare, aviation and missile components. And just the other day, the former commander of the U.S. Army in Europe Ben Hodges, noted that the U.S. provides Ukraine with sufficient assistance for defense, but not for offensive, emphasizing that an offensive without total support from the air is fatal. For example, the U.S. Army would never conduct such an offensive. Meanwhile, the large-scale liberation of territories in 2022 took place without total air support, but there is a nuance. At some point where it was possible to play beyond common sense, it will no longer be possible to repeat, and realizing this, since 2022 Ukraine has regularly sent requests for the provision of the weaponry that may be needed in the short term. In particular, we are talking about F-16s and Atakms missiles. But Ukraine received Atakms of M-39 modification only a year later, immediately demonstrating the highest efficiency of use. Within the framework of the Dragonfly operation alone, 22 Ka-52 attack helicopters and 9 Mi-8 multi-role helicopters were destroyed and rendered inoperable. A similar question arises with regard to the F-16s. If we follow the logic, they require 4 to 6 months for the additional training of already experienced pilots who could operate these fighters at a basic level. Preparation of the airfield and all infrastructure, as well as technical personnel, for maintenance. Creation of an air defense dome. Meanwhile instead of starting in 2022, this process started only in the second half of 2023. The other issue is tanks. Today, the most reliable supplier of tanks for Ukraine is not the United States, Germany, or the United Kingdom, but Poland, which has transferred more than 320 main battle tanks. No other country has transferred as many tanks to Ukraine as Poland. The question arises, why? Ukrainian tank crews are the most experienced not only in Europe, but also in the world. What army in the world has such a unique experience of destruction than Ukraine? One gets the impression that Ukraine's partners are trying to help win the war with Russia with the least costs, but alas this is impossible. Only a complete, absolute return on all positions can crush the under-imperial anachronism called Russia. Unfortunately the partners have yet to fully realize this dogma. The parallel reality of the abstracted West remains much more monolithic, than Ukraine's actual and critical need for victory.